Good evening. It is Tuesday, October 10th. This is the Guilford Board of Education. I invite you to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Um, action on meeting minutes from September. Is there a motion to approve the September 11th, 2023 meeting minutes? Second. Uh, any corrections um, or comments about these minutes? Um, I just I just had a couple. Um, uh, at the under the Pledge of Allegiance, um, the second paragraph, um, second to last sentence, the board workshop to be held two weeks on Tuesday, September 26th. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Instead of from today. Mm -hmm. um, the same page under communications, unless I misunderstood something, um the 23 24 first sentence school calendar year which was developed by the administration right yeah. yes not commission yes thank you and then i had something on page five. Oh, very minor on um page five which is under public under public comments um the third paragraph uh, the person's last name, Amy Trish, T R I C H E. Any other comments or corrections on these minutes? All right, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of um, approving the minutes as amended? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? All right, thank you. Um, and then the September 26, 2023 meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. Second. Any uh, comments, corrections to these minutes? I, I had uh, two on, on page two. Um, I want to say it's halfway down the page, and it's the, the, the two-line sentence that starts Dr. Balistrasi. I'm, I'm just going to ask that in that first sentence. Uh, Dr. Balistrasi commented that she agrees that this is a challenging text that is unique and powerful and addresses the topic of internalized racism. Um, and then just for accuracy, and I'm willing to be incorrect about this, but under Flamer, under the topic, um, the write-up about our discussion about Flamer, um, Dr. Freeman, one, two, three, four, five down, um, this story is powerful and could be life-saving as it addresses a young character facing racism and bullying as he deals with his sexual identity. Is racism the appropriate? Yes, for that uh, book? student. Has, yeah, he's mm -hmm. uh, okay. a Filipino young man. And so okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Both, okay. Both I just aspects. want to make sure yeah. we we're accurate in that. Anything else? That nope. Oh, and then the last thing I noticed on page five. Sorry, the third one down. Um, either Mrs. Peck or Mr. Petra. Oh yeah. But I don't think Mrs. Petra was joining us. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> well, it references she. She. So, so I'm. I'm guessing Mrs. Peck. Mrs. Peck. Yes. Do we feel comfortable with that? Kristen's not here, so I don't want to. Even if you, do you think those are your comments, or I think that was, I think it was. Taking the wrong things out today. That was Mrs. Peck. Yeah. But I think that was. Not you. That was actually me. That was you. That was you. No. Okay, so we can make that whole paragraph. I, I said something similar to that. Mr. Mr. Petra. Petra. And then change the pronouns as well. Okay. Excellent. All right. Any, any other comments? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the September 26th meeting minutes as approved, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? No. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we are up to item four, public comments for topics on the agenda. Does anyone want to address the board? All right. Seeing none. Um, review and approval of expenditure of the month, Mr. Del Ventura. That's me. Thank you, Dr. Ballas Tracy. Um, in September 2023, total expenditures amounted to $6,698,043, which is nearly in line <coughs> with last year's spending of 22.69% of the budget. Revenues reached $46,895, sourced from various areas, including non resident tuition, Medicaid, and pre K tuition. Notably, funds amounting to $48,662 were received and dispersed as paraprofessional deductible assistance stipends um, on the September 29th payroll. Regarding specific expenses, expense categories, salaries, and employee benefits remained consistent with the previous 2022 year with an apparent increase in September due to three payrolls in both September 22 and 23. Purchase services saw a slight increase attributed to time, timing variances, uh, variations in encumbrances and payments. Tuition expenses showed a decrease in expenditure percentage mainly due to payment timing. Supplies and materials expenditures uh, mirrored the prior year with variance explained by budget adjustments and payment timing. Capital expenses remained lower than previous year while transportation costs approximated 2022. Lastly, a warrant of two million $123,643 represents all payments for the month. Uh, we discussed uh, the warrants and the financials in our operations meeting prior to this meeting. Um, and uh, all questions regarding the warrants were, were answered. Uh, special thanks to Mrs. Trudeau and her team for their continued uh, swift financial budgeting. Excellent. Uh, any additional comments or questions at this meeting? All right, is there a motion to approve the September 2023 financial reports for fiscal year 23-24? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? No. All righty. Um, we are up to communications. Do any of my colleagues have any communications um, to share? All right, um, I'm just gonna then take the opportunity to share a communication um, with our general public, which is that on Friday, September 29th, our superintendent, Paul Freeman, uh, received an award from the Connecticut Education Association for his, in quotes, outstanding contributions to public education. Um, he uh, received the award with fellow awardees, <coughs> state representatives, Jeff Curry and Kathleen McCarty. Um, and I just wanna thank Dr. Freeman um, for his continued leadership um, our district and his steadfast support for our faculty and staff. The award is well deserved and reflects the high regard among others across the state for Paul's work in <coughs> public schools. So Likewise. I wanted to make much. sure that got announced. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, student representatives. Wonderful to have you Welcome back. back. So good to be back. <laughs> yeah. um, my understanding is that um, you will likely be joined by a third representative, perhaps as soon as next month. That's right. Um, but fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, but you are both returning, and it's really terrific to have you. So I'm going to turn it over to you. It's a treat to be back. Uh, the year is off to a great start at Baldwin. They are focusing on creating and maintaining a sense of belonging for every student, which is critical for a healthy learning environment. BMS is the first time students from every single one of Guilford's elementary schools come together in one school. Students move from an elementary grade level population of 60 classmates to a grade five of about 240. And that, require, that requires thoughtful planning and opportunities for relationship building. So on Thursday, September 28th and Friday, September 29th, all of the fifth grade students spent a full day at Camp Hazen in Chester. Uh, while at the camp, students participated in a variety of team and relationship building activities. It was a great experience for the students as they're making new friends and building relationships with their peers. BMS also hosted two back-to-school nights. The grade five back-to-school night was held on Monday, September 18th, and the grade six one was held on Tuesday the 19th. Parents got to meet their children's teachers and learn about the child's daily experience at Baldwin. Both evenings were very well attended and many thanks go out to the Gilbert community for support of the schools. The BMS PTO has also been very cooperative so far this year. 
This year they've been able to provide funding to help support the campaigns and trips. They've organized the BMS Guilford Citizens Day Parade Flow, and they'll be hosting a trunk or treat event in late October. All after school clubs are also now in session. The clubs include chess club, and drama club, art club, makers club, and hiking club. They're busy. <laughs> yeah, busy. Students at Adams are looking forward to the annual Boo Bash dance at the end of the month. Uh, also, team building days are scheduled for grades 7 and 8 at the start of November. They'll incorporate community building activities as well as engineering and STEM activities. Sports at Adams are getting into full swing. In the fall season, the Raiders boys and girls soccer teams, cross country teams, and the girls volleyball and field hockey teams are enjoying their time on the fields, courses, and courts. Overall, students have transitioned into the school year well, and they're working hard in their classes and having fun both making new friends and being with old friends. Uh, on to Calvin Lee. Students were thrilled to break in the new Traverse Wall as part of a fitness laboratory lesson in physical education class. Muscular strength and endurance, along with courage and cognitive route planning skills were implemented. And in the coming weeks, students will design their own routes. Adventure. Calvin Lee fourth graders participated in the Guilford Parade a few Saturdays ago. Uh, this year's theme for the school float was fourth grade treasures 1950 to now. This year's float won the award for best use of props and the parade is a great event overall for the students and families as well as for the whole community. A uh, big thanks go out to the parent volunteers who helped coordinate the creation of the float. Students in grade four are making classroom websites I don't know how to do that, but uh, <laughs> that highlight their community and learning. <laughs> Students have added information about class norms, important dates, and topics in math, literacy, and related arts. The fourth graders include articles, photos, and videos of students interviewing each other about classroom news, and they're motivated to do work that's personally relevant and challenging that has a real-world context. Uh, one of the students reported, quote unquote, it's cool that we show people what we're learning in class. <laughs> Okay, so um, at all of the elementary schools, they had the fourth grade floats for the parade. Um, but at Melissa Jones, they've been practicing a lot of their sort of yearly back to school traditions. Um, so the first grade went to the fair. I think a couple of the different schools, the first grade went to the fair. Um, and the fourth graders participated in the parade in the spelling bee. And the PTO also held a back to school picnic. And they started some new enrichment programs like chess and wiffle bowl. Um, at Cox, each month the school focuses on a new theme. So September's focus was courage, and then this month they're focusing on acceptance, both socially and academically. Um, and then this month is also Fire Safety Month, so the Guilford Fire Department is, gonna, um, is going to come soon to do a fire safety presentation. And then at Guilford Lakes, the first graders also went to the fair. Um, Principal Ryan sent me a whole bunch of pictures um, from the kids with their art projects and with the animals, so that was, that was cute. <laughs> um, and the fourth graders also made a giant statue of the grizzly, which is out in the hallway over there. And we were wondering. Some of us are wondering the source of that. Yeah, it's taller than George, so it's pretty tall. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Fall Family Fun Festival is coming up this Friday, so they have games and raffles, trunk or treat, food, uh, a, whole bunch of, a whole bunch of activities for kids and I think parents too. And so that's going to be behind Guilford Lakes in the fields back there. Um, and they named the Guilford Lakes mascot, so now they call the lion Leo. Leo. Leo the lion. And then at the high school, um, the there's a couple, oh, the PSATs are tomorrow, which we were talking about before. Um, the sports games have all been happening now, this is, everyone's sort of in season, or you know, getting into their later, the later parts of their season. Um, so those games have been well attended. Um, you know anything else? Uh, yeah, the music groups are going to have their first concert soon, if they haven't already. The Voices group had a concert with the Yukon Symphony Choir, oh, yeah. I want to say. Um, and the Symphony Orchestra and Wind Ensembles are having a concert on October 18th that we're really looking forward to. Um, and the Fall Play is getting up and running right now. It is. Shakespeare abridged. I think the yeah, it's not the quite the it's, the it's, the it's called the complete works of William Shakespeare, but it's obviously it's a long finishing. night. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. I know I'll be in attendance. It looks really fun. A lot of yeah. my friends are doing it. I can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. and there's also there's been a trail. Um, there's, like, there's been a trail built around the high school um, that sort of goes around some of the backfields. So the middle school cross country team has been coming and like running on the trail. So they have a meet tomorrow here, 
which is cool. which great. is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. that is great. Okay. Do you guys know when the um when the play is? If you don't know off the top of your head, I catch you up. No, okay. I want to keep it. I want to keep it. GHSCA yeah, I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, okay. It has Excellent. Get your tickets early. They'll sell out. I hear you. Well, that's terrific. Thank you. Um, one of the things I wanted um, uh, to just um, uh, invite you to do um, also this year um, is if you, just like any of us, have kind of topics that come up that you would like to the board to think about or consider, please feel free to reach out to, to um, Ms. Chaff and, and myself, both of us together, um, keeps her, her in the loop, um, but it allows um, allows me to, to know that you're interested um, because I, I really want to make sure that we are um, kind of getting your input about things that the student body think is important mm -hmm. um, and things that you would um, like to hear or addressed or talked about or, or something. Um, I will bring it to, to Dr. Freeman and, and, and also my colleagues and, and we'll think about how to, to address those. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Of course. Definitely will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the you complete works dates? of William Shakespeare. I love the poster. As Friday, November 17th, uh, Saturday, November 18th, and the 19th. The Terrific. Friday and Saturday evenings and Sundays and matinee. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, you're welcome to stay, and you're also welcome to go if you have things to get to. So, great to have you back. Thank you, Thank you for being great back. Great to have you back. Thanks, guys. All right, Dr. Freeman, I'm turning it over to you for superintendent's report. Thank you very much. And it should be a relatively short report this evening. Um, this is your first official meeting in October, and so we do have the preliminary enrollment report to officially present tonight. Not much has changed since the conversations that we had in um, August and in September. But if you do uh, draw your attention to the first sheet, you will note that we have 3,100 students who are enrolled um, on property in classes this year. That is down approximately 22 students from last year. When we pursued our budget process last year, we were projecting that we would be down 57 students. We're mm -hmm. down 22, we're not down the 57 that we were projecting. Um, if you turn to the next page, and this is a report that the board is familiar with, um, this shows the breakdown by elementary section and by grade. Uh, again, I want to draw your attention to two particular pieces of information on this um, look at enrollment. One is the average elementary class size of 17.2 this year. Um, that is a really um, positive class size. Um, it is, in fact, um, enviable to have a class size that, that is that low. Built into that, however, is the inaccuracy of looking at averages. And so um, I want to draw your attention to the kindergarten sections and point out once again that when we have four neighborhood schools that service five grade levels, the average class size is not particularly accurate. And so in kindergarten, you will note that we have a low of 13 and a high of 19 when you look across the way the sections broke out. Um, we are continuing to keep an eye on the sections at Cox, but I can report that the school year has started well and that we are supporting our students again um, I want to point out that those are um, not unusual class sizes. Even in kindergarten, to see class sizes of 19 across the state is, is not at all unusual. Um, and then I want to draw your attention to a third look at the enrollment, and it is the line graph. Um, it's about four or five pages in. And on this graph, what you are looking at is our actual enrollment, which is depicted in orange. And you will see that we were in decline and that that decline has essentially leveled out over the last four years. The blue line is the HC projections that we had. Um, the HC projections projected that we would continue uh, seeing declining enrollment precipitously. And our actual uh, enrollment never declined at that degree and leveled out in 2020. 
the purple line is the new projection that we um, contracted for last year from SLAM. And you'll see that right now, one year in, we're tracking pretty closely to the SLAM projections. I will note that that purple line, if you look at the SLAM projection, will begin to flatten out for the next five years and then begin to increase again in years five through 10. So SLAM is projecting that we are about at the lowest enrollment that we anticipate. We will stay here for the next four years or so, and then they project that we will begin to see increasing enrollments at that time once again. Um, Again, um, that is the overall projection. October 1st is the official date for enrollment that we will use for the state moving forward, but it doesn't mean that we are locked in. Um, obviously, enrollments will continue to change as people move into town or move uh, within the town. We don't tend to have a lot of in and out migration once the school year begins. Uh, we will begin looking at budget projections using those enrollments. We are not sure at this time exactly what we will do with kindergarten projections for next year as there's a complication around kindergarten with the new right. automatic enrollment date. Uh, usually what we've been doing for the past several years is replicating this year's K enrollment and using that as a projection for next year. You may see something slightly different as we talk with others around the state and try to figure out what impact that automatic enrollment date may have on kindergarten enrollment for next year. We will also look at the SLAM projection um, because they are looking at birth rates as well. And so in the next two or three years, we may not just be replicating kindergarten. We may be looking at increasing those numbers to get ahead of the enrollment increases rather than struggling with them after the fact. And um, sorry, would you remind the, um, all of us the date is going to change so that it's now a September first, first date, which means there could be fewer mm -hmm. kids entering kindergarten. Correct. But we may catch up the following year because it's it's simply a one year adjustment. Yeah, that is correct, and it's important to note that the state changed the date not. Um, it is not a hard cutoff. It is the automatic enrollment date has been shifted. And districts have been allowed <clears throat> the opportunity um, to entertain any um, application by a parent who feels that oh, they're... I didn't understand that. No, they okay. didn't just change the enrollment date. They, they changed the automatic enrollment date. And okay. so um, we are looking at how we would assess kindergarten readiness and determining whether or not we would be refusing to allow uh, enrollment for a family who felt that ch their child was ready. Um, met most students in Guilford have uh, had really positive preschool, early school experiences. Right. It is very likely in Guilford that parents who request the enrollment will be granted that enrollment. We don't expect that we're going to see a lot of students that we uh, identify as unready for school when the family feels that they are ready so it mm -hmm. may have a minimal impact on us okay and for what it's worth uh, there are a number of parents who are very anxious about knowing exactly what our process will look like and um, to date I'm not aware of any school district that has been able to answer that question definitively so mm -hmm. um, we are working on it we're collaborating with other districts in the region uh, and we hope to have an answer out before December but we have not answered the parents and I just want to note that I know that it is stressful for parents who don't know where their child is going to be next September whether they need to continue preschool yeah. or whether we but we just don't want to say something early and then have to change that answer so mm -hmm. we are working on it we're working on it as quickly as we can and we will have a, a clear communication out hopefully in the next several weeks um, and I've got an email in my box today from a parent who's checking in again and there are just some anxious parents wanting to know if their child will be starting in Guilford next year or if they will right. have one more year of preschool. Right. All right. Uh, questions for Dr. Freeman? Anybody? Comments? All right. My only other note is to make the board aware of an out-of-state field trip that I have approved and policy requires me to bring this to your attention. Um, but on October 26th, 
um, students at Adams will have the opportunity to uh, to experience the Boston Symphony Orchestra Youth Concert. So students will miss a day of school um, if they um, if they participate. We are anticipating about 90 students with 10 chaperones. And again, uh, in accordance with policy 6326, wanted to make you aware. And it's a wonderful opportunity for students at Adams. Excellent. And surprisingly, that concludes That's my report it. tonight. <laughs> Alrighty, well, we'll go. That's why you're getting all these awards. <laughs> exactly. I've never gotten an award for brevity. I was just going to say, there's a new bill for brevity award. Um, all right, uh, now up to the board agenda 9.1 is to act on personnel items. Uh, we are being asked to ratify the resignation of the following teachers Cheryl Shalosky, school psychologist. Uh, Guilford High School in Guilford Lakes, 15 years of service in Guilford. Is there a motion to uh, approve the ratification of this resignation? So moved. Or to ratify? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? Uh, a thank you certainly um, to Cheryl for 15 years of service Absolutely. to Guilford. Um, can, I can I just ask a question? Um, just with that, and then we lost the woman, I forget her name now, who we trained for Orton Gillingham, who's going to train the rest of the district. These, are, these seem to me to be two big losses. Um, have we already filled this position? Are we working on it? Like, where does yes. that stand? Um, and so uh, I believe I'm meeting a candidate to fill this position tomorrow. I think that's on my calendar to meet with that candidate tomorrow. So yes, we're working on filling those as quickly as we can. Um, I believe you're probably referencing Suzanne, who left not this year, but the year before. And yes, if anything, we have more Orton Gillingham certified teachers in district. We've been growing that certification over the last several years. Um, I believe there was a time where Suzanne was the only OG certified teacher on staff. And I know we the level she was at. There's different training. levels of yeah. training. Yeah. Um, but yes, we continue to fill those positions. Um, again, I would note um, there is a lot of mid-career special education movement that has been happening in the state that is very different from what we've experienced in the past. Um, we hired in a number of special education teachers this year from other districts, and we've also seen some of our sort of mid-year professionals who have moved on to other opportunities this year, and that seems to be a changing dynamic due to the, the teacher shortage. A lot of movement happening. Thank you. Other questions? Or? Um, all right, 9.2, update on the book challenges. Um, the Board of Education um, at their workshop meeting on September 26th um, had a, a discussion and reviewed the five uh, books for which we had received a request for, for consideration. And I did want to just uh, provide an update to the community on that discussion. It was a public meeting. We did have the public uh, present. Um, but for those who were unable to attend, um, the, uh, but just very briefly, the request for um, reconsideration of the, of the books um, uh, occurred. We received this request in May. Um, we do have a policy, 6334, which guides the process. Um, uh, one of our community members, Danielle Scarpolino, submitted a request for consideration, reconsideration of five books. Um, these books were The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, uh, which is um, taught in an AP English class here at Guilford High School and is present in the library. Uh, Flamer by Mike Corrado and Lawn Boy, an e-book by Jonathan Evison. Uh, available at Guilford High School Library. And Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, um, which we have uh, in, in an ebook form by Jesse Andrews, and It's Perfectly Normal by Robbie H. Harris and Michael Emberley at the Adams Middle School Library. Um, we explained at that meeting that um, the, um, I'm sorry, the, the request for the books um, by the submitter was to ask the Board of Ed to determine for the record um, whether the title or the book um, is appropriate or not for children um, and was concerned about accidental exposure um, to inappropriate content. Um, we explained at that meeting that the decisions within the Board's authority related to the books used in Guilford Public School classes 
or the library um, is whether a book can remain on a course roster or on the library shelf, not should it um, or, or shall it, but can it. Um, and the point of that um, explanation is to let the public know that we were voting on the current use and the current shelving of these texts, um, but that we continue as a board um, per policy 6334 to delegate the responsibility for future decisions around these books to our qualified, professional, professionally trained um, librarians. Um, at that meeting on September 26th, we reviewed each book one at a time. Uh, Dr. Freeman gave an overview of each book, including input that he and Dr. Goss received from librarians, teachers, and professional staff regarding these books. Uh, so Dr. Freeman and Dr. Goss met with um, Ms. Chaff, Joe Mangino, George Cooksey, Garen Mullen, and Cheryl Robertson um, around these books. We then had a board discussion and held a board vote on each book. Um, just very briefly, um, I, I thought it was a, is a really wonderful discussion. Each of the board members had uh, reviewed the books over the summer. Uh, we each had an opportunity um, to comment on each of the books. Um, their air meeting minutes will reflect some of this, but um, just very briefly, um, for instance, um, one of the things we noted about The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison is really the unique um, expression in that text on internalized racism and the value of that for those in that AP English class. Um, that the book Flamer was a really important text around a young man experiencing both racism um, but also bullying around his sexual identity. Uh, the book Lawn Boy um, provides students with uh, a story about a young man experiencing poverty, um, experiencing also um, an attempt to find his sexual identity, experiencing racism. Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, um, a really um, interesting text that uh, tracks a young man who is experiencing the death of a friend and a classmate and that student's journey through that. And then lastly, it's perfectly normal, um, which is a, a kind of factual science-based, I would, I would suggest, uh, text that provides um, the reader with um, facts and information about puberty, about sexual health, um, about sexuality, um, and I think we all commented, or various uh, members commented on the importance of that kind of text being available, particularly in a world now that is full of internet misinformation. I'm going to um, note um, that um, my colleagues may have uh, other comments they want to add at this point, or just give anyone opportunity if they do. Well summed up. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and then, and then, just obviously um, to report on the vote, um, the board, all nine members were present for this meeting, um, and all votes were unanimous. The board voted unanimously to allow continued use of the bluest eye by Toni Morrison on the course roster of AP English at Guilford High School and continued availability on the library shelves of Guilford High School. The Board of Education voted unanimously to allow continued availability of Flamer and Lawn Boy at the Guilford High School Library. And we voted unanimously to allow continued availability of It's a Perfectly Normal and Me and Earl and the Dying Girl um, at the Adams Middle School Library. Um, and again, I'll just reiterate that these votes support the current use and availability of these texts. The Board of Education will continue as per policy 6334 to delegate the authority to professional staff within Guilford Public Schools to make future decisions about these books, including whether they remain on a course ro roster or in Guilford Public School libraries using their professional training and judgment 
as well as their authority to make future decisions about these books. So we just wanted to make sure, again, that members of the public who are unable to attend um, got an update on that uh, meeting, our discussion, and the final decision. Uh, 9.3 is to act on setting the 2024 graduation date. Am I turning it over to you, Dr. Prima, for any explanation here? Or Just is... quickly to note um, that, again, um, you may be uh, familiar with the fact that the state used to require us to make it to April 1st until we could lock in a graduation date. Um, the state changed that expectation last year. The board no longer has to wait until April 1st to formally set a graduation date. Um, we would be identifying June 13th, that is a Thursday, and that is currently the last day of school for all students. By locking in the date this early, um, we facilitate family planning, we facilitate the planning of the um, after school safe graduation activity that, that community members support and volunteer. Um, and should there be snow days that change that date, know that seniors will be um, invited and expected to attend any additional school days, although we would still be recognizing their graduation on the 13th. Um, we had that separation this year. I think from a high school perspective, it worked well. Uh, there were some questions last year about would that complicate exams for students, but the high school was able to manage and accommodate that very well. The complication that we ran into is that the first year doing that, we created a conflict between the eighth grade stepping up event at Adams and the graduation for our high school students, which we then exacerbated because it was gonna rain. And so we moved the high school- I'm remembering that rain. <laughs> we moved the high school graduation <laughs> earlier. I will just note that if we, if the board approves this graduation date tonight, and should we have snow days, um, Principal Chaff and Principal Mullen and I will coordinate earlier and better and work to make sure that we avoid that conflict this year moving forward. Um, the right thing to do for students, the right thing to do for families and the community, and we'll make sure that we manage any kind of conflict like we saw last year more carefully this year. So I know we used to have to wait until April 1st, so it's wonderful not to have to wait that long. Um, there, I'm, I'm guessing, since you brought it to us, there's an advantage for making the decision this early, although we have no idea what the winter looks like. Um, again, just for planning purposes, we okay. get to announce it to the seniors and their families now. And okay. so anybody flying in family, anybody okay. built, and then particularly for the after school activity that I couldn't, I lost you for a minute. Um, <laughs> for that after school, around. every year we end up trying to juggling venues and can we put money down do we not put money down what if it changes this allows that planning committee to know okay. that it will be thursday the 13th and again um, we can manage any complication that might come up around exams or students who need to finish so that we know that a student that is being recognized at graduation night has earned that recognition was not an issue managing those those this year okay and what are we seeing on average for snow days? It's, I mean, are we looking at like two per year? I'm trying to understand in terms of... Last year it was exactly one. Was had one. it been zero, we wouldn't have had the conflict with Adams. Right. And had it been two, three, or four, we wouldn't have had the conflict with Adams. But because it was mm. one, that, that created we that conflict. Had, I'm trying to think. We, that's well, if it's, one, so if it's one this year, right, now we're looking at a potential Friday in which we'd have students returning if you know yes. at, at lower grades where it gets tricky is when you get into that next week if we have six right right well, and certainly six yeah right and we haven't had a winter like that it seems like in four or five years now that we've actually had something that significant the other thing if it's any comfort is that everybody in the state is doing this yeah. and so and and it hasn't been at all unusual um, for private school, right? It's, it's not at all unusual for the seniors to graduate a week earlier than everybody else in a lot of other school settings. It, it became unusual in public schools in Connecticut because of that, that expectation. Um, again, um, we'll see it happening day by day. If it starts piling up, we'll be working on that planning as, as the snow days add up. Sounds good. I know with most seniors, if they're carrying a certain grade point average, it, it, it's very, my experience the last several years, I see another parent in the audience that I know, 
if they're doing a certain level, there's typically not a, a sit down final or it's a submit. It's a, like a submission of something. So it's they're not having to come back three days mm -hmm. later after graduating and sit for an exam that's never really yeah. played out in the last a lot of final years. a lot of final exams get waived several have been changed from high you know, it, yes like and, and high stakes finals to cumulative yes yeah. we're doing less and less of that yeah. Julie I don't yeah. know if you want to comment if there's anything that you want to add about how it worked last year or what you anticipate for this year and thank you for being here um, first I would like to request that when you make this decision you also order no rain on graduation <laughs> <laughs> right, was, we had a very no rain. No, no rain. rain. Um, two years in a row of rain. I've, I've done gone. the rain. Um, no, but seriously, I think what we did, it was a little bit, um, I think we got the messaging out to the teachers about a month ahead of graduation. And so organizing the exams worked out well. There were some so there's a clause in the handbook for GHS that if you have a certain GPA, you don't have to sit for an exam at the end of your senior year. Uh, and so many students are exempted from exams. If, uh, however, they don't meet that exemption, a lot of them are project-based uh, assessments that culminate the course. However, there were some teachers who did give more formal paper and pencil exams at the end of the school year, and we just basically set up a proctoring session. So the admin team took turns proctoring exams uh, during the school day for seniors specifically, and then that allowed teachers to keep teaching the students in 11th, 10th, and 9th grade uh, without interruption and allowed them to best prepare the underclass students for underclass students um, the younger students for the end of the year and their final exams gotcha. any other questions for well thank you thank, right. thank, thank you much. Um, any other discussion uh, so uh, I will entertain a motion uh, to set the 2024 graduation date for June 13th, 2024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Mm -mm. No. All righty. Thank you. Um, 9.4 is to act on submission of the consolidated grants application. This is the 23-24 federal programs program entitlements under every student succeeds act is there anything um, we obviously have in front of it there's a title one part a ninety three thousand two hundred thirteen dollars um, which is related to um, I'm reading here academic support for students performing before below grade level expectations uh, title two Part A, 38,130, summer professional learning in high quality instruction and ongoing job embedded professional learning. Uh, and Title III, Part A, 6,000, sorry, Title III, Part A, $6,334, providing additional tutoring services to students who are English learners. And then Title IV, Part A, 10,000, training for teachers focused on creating equitable school environments in which students with all backgrounds, identities, and perspectives belong. Um, that was abbreviated uh, description. Um, this is a total application of $131,343 through Guilford Public Schools application and $6,334 through the LEARN Consortium for a total of $137,677. Yeah, this is an annual exercise. These right. are federal dollars that we are entitled to. Um, we are required to uh, detail how those dollars will be allocated, which is what you see in front of you. And you will note that um, the, the grants that we receive at the federal level are relatively small compared to our overall budget. This is a much larger investment in other districts. It's not a significant right revenue stream for us in Guilford. Right. Um, if there are questions, Dr. Goss can speak more specifically to those allocations. But again, this is not competitive grants. These are entitlements. We simply <coughs> need to identify um, for the, the federal government where those dollars uh, are intended to go year, each year. 
Right. And so what I read was basically what um, uh, the, the Guilford Public Schools approach to yes. um, the, the type of funding that can happen under each of those titles. Yep. And there are different restrictions on each of the different titles. And so you see that we have identified where those dollars would be appropriately spent in each of those buckets. Any questions about this? No? Um, so then I will entertain, uh, oh wait, is this just receive or is it, help? I'm sorry. No. We're acting on this it. This is to act on it um, tonight, yep. Uh, I will entertain a motion um, to uh, approve the submission of the consolidated grants application. So, so moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. All righty. Um, 9.5 is to receive for possible action. Um, <coughs> recommendation from the policy committee. Is there see this this is oh my <laughs> goodness, you're arriving on cue, and you need a chair. <laughs> we pulled your chair away. We pulled your chair away because I thought you weren't going to be able to be here. Oh. And, okay, recommendation from the policy would you, would you <laughs> to, Someone else can take it up if you'd like. That's okay. Hi, everyone. Hi. Are you just waiting so you can make an entrance? <laughs> I mean, you know. Talk about dramatic. I've never been shy about an entrance. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Are you sure we really can have someone else do this? No, that's okay. okay. I wrote my notes because I knew I was going to be right yeah. at about on time. If I can see it, I just might need somebody to hold it for me out here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is revisions to policy 3724 on dining services. And like so many of our policy revisions, this is simply something we need to do to keep up with state um, regulations and it's basically to disallow anyone serving meals to children who can't afford to pay for them to um, shame the kids to offer a less expensive lunch to any kid so that every kid is treated the same whether or not they can afford to pay for it this has been our practice anyway, anyway and right. but we are happy to codify it in policy Excellent. Um, so this is a, a receive item tonight um, unless there's a reason, we uh, typically would then vote on this next month. Um, and so if anyone reading that has questions, they can reach out to Kristen, I assume. Yep. Correct? Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. All righty. You can go now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving. I'm so sorry. I would have left your name tag right there. I said 8 o'clock. I'm not I, that late. I, I got it. I hear you. Um, okay, policy. Uh, now I'm going to put you on the spot again. Um, Reports from committees. Does the policy committee have anything else to report out tonight? Nope. Our last meeting um, a couple of weeks ago, we discussed possible policy committee topics for the upcoming year. So I think we've got some interesting um, regulations that will be changing as the year goes on. Excellent. Uh, operations committee, any other updates? Um, from the really committee? healthy facilities update. Lots of projects nearing end. Um, and uh, we are in discussion with our um, uh, health insurance brokerage uh, firm to start uh, looking into contract renewals. Excellent. Uh, curriculum, curriculum Instruction and Assessment Committee. Uh, our next meeting is October 23rd um, at 6 o'clock at the Adams School. Correct. Correct. Um, Excellent. All right. Any liaisons um, to town committees? No. Any reports out? No update. Um, and learning board of directors. I don't think we have a report on that. Um, uh, number 11, public comment um, for anyone who would like to address the board. Um, we ask that you come up. Um, if you can state your name and uh, address, and um, uh, please limit to three minutes. My name is Alyssa Stevens. I live at 135 Millstone Drive. Um, just first wanted to say thank you for all that you do. I know it's not an easy job. It certainly hasn't been made any easier in the recent times. Um, I'm here to express my concerns about the timeliness of the buses, particularly at the elementary level. I have a kindergartner and a second grader. In the last two years, we've had minimal issues and fairly consistent stop times. Our times this year were a lot or were later, particularly in the afternoon, and that time has continued to get pushed out. To give you an idea, our drop-off time was 3.39 last year, and currently it's 4.01. We're still the first stop off the bus, and the bus has been dropping off closer to 4.10 or later, which is 40, 40 plus minutes after school gets out. Um, 
I know that none of the buses are arriving to our school until between 3.45 and 4 p.m. Um, I've tried to reach out multiple, to multiple people about this issue, but I've struggled to get a reasonable explanation and was told we're doing the best we can. I feel like we can and need to do better. I know this is a complex issue, but feel it's really important to try to figure out the root cause of what is causing the delays in order to properly address the issue to ensure kids aren't sitting in the hallways for extended periods of time after school waiting for the buses and to ensure that the teachers and staff are able to leave at the end of their contract a day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anybody else who would like to address tonight? All right. Um, uh, closing comments. I don't um, have any closing comments tonight, um, except um, just to alert the public of an upcoming meeting on next Wednesday, October 18th. Um, we are going to have a budget input meeting um, here at Guilford High School at 7:30. This is a meeting we have every year, uh, typically in October and this is an opportunity for the public to come um, to the Board of Ed and express um, an interest in something that they would like to see in the budget uh, believe it or not the administration and our uh, school staff have already started thinking about the budget for the 2024-25 year um, but we are not in a place where we're looking at line items and um, and budget figures however again it is the opportunity for the public to come before the board and make requests for things they would like to see uh, the board of ed and the school administration consider so i want to make sure um, that word about that upcoming meeting got out um, the last thing we have to do tonight is an executive session um, the executive session tonight is for the board to discuss pending litigation. When we come out of the executive session, there will be no more discussion and no more votes. Um, so I just wanted to let people know that. So I am now going to ask for a motion to go into executive session. Second. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much.